right. I'm here with Chris Cowart, uh, sales manager over at uh, Straight Music in Austin, Texas. And Chris, thanks for joining us, uh, first of all. Really appreciate Absolutely. it. Um, tell us um, first what's, um, you know, before we get into your business, tell us about the landscape in Texas right now. I've, I've heard that the state is uh, reopening. So, um, yeah. How is that going and when are you reopening or have reopened and what have you uh, seen there? What are the details? Well, uh, yeah, so the, the governor uh, lifted the stay home order um, and that go, that's effective today. So basically all uh, non-essential retail is allowed to open their doors to 25% capacity. Mm -hmm. um, so what we, uh, last Friday, we were able to begin curbside service again. And so what we've decided as a, a company is that we feel like it's a little too early to let just open the doors up. And uh, we feel like, uh, you know, the, the, the 25% of our normal capacity that we would be allowed to have in the building isn't going to significantly, our sales numbers aren't significantly going to jump from that. So, I, you know, I, I think for the staff and, and our customer safety, it's probably best you know, we're going to, we're going to kind of uh, keep an eye on it for the next couple of weeks and continue our curbside. And because uh, that's been working really well. And the, uh, I have a feeling too, that uh, some of this may spill over to once, once we kind of resume back to business as usual. Uh, I think that's something, you know, like all these texting apps, you know, to pick up your orders and different right. things. Like, I think that's something we're going to implement into our daily business too. So I think there's some, you know, there are some things from this that are going to translate into into the future of how we conduct uh, music retail. Yeah, no doubt. I've, I've, um, we just discovered some of the food apps that just, uh, you just press it and they, the food is on your porch. Uh, yeah. yeah. In my case, so it is pretty cool, I got to say. I mean, it's unfortunate what's happened, but it, I mean, it's kind of cool. You just have it yeah. there and you open your door and your food's there. So uh, yeah. that's kind of nice. Um, yeah, today, by the way, um, for those who might be watching later on, is uh, May 1st that we're uh, doing the recording. Uh, okay, it, you know, um, so, so you say not going to, if you don't fully reopen right away, of course, you're going to continue as curbside. I mean, has there been demand, though, of, uh, from customers? Have they said, hey, we really want to get to go in that store or, and see some stuff or really miss it? Or have they kind of been more like, you know, we're kind of scared of going in there and, checking you know, things out we'd rather have it another way you know. i think i think we you know i think people have been uh, very understanding of the circumstances uh mm -hmm. and one one thing that's uh that's reoccurring with our customers uh we we've get we've gotten a lot of emails and phone calls from people wanting to purchase instruments from us rather than uh from like a big box store uh because I think that, you know, just the idea of helping and supporting a local business during this time is really important to people. So that's been really, uh, really positive. And, uh, you know, it, it makes you feel good too, is the, you know, kind of the person in charge that people really do take notice of your store and, and your, uh, your service. And, uh, I think that's a testament to what we do around here. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I, I don't really, to answer your question, I don't know that, like, I haven't really gotten people, that are, you know, upset about not being able to play a guitar, this and that. And I understand, like, that's something, too, that when we do open our doors, those are all questions and, and challenges that we, uh, we face. You know, I don't know at this point how we actually, you know, conduct that, like how, how to keep things sanitary and how, you know, we've been tossing around some different ideas with, you know, limiting the number of people in the department, the, uh, those, those type of things. But I think, too, it's something that, as we move forward, like, uh, I think people will, will naturally understand the circumstances and how things, you know, how things are going to operate in the future. And, you know, it's not going to necessarily, you know, be like it was, but, uh, but hopefully we'll, we'll get back to some, some point of that. And, uh, uh, yeah, I, I think one thing, <laughs> one thing the governor said last week that was really interesting to me, and I brought this up to my boss was, Today, he allowed all the uh, museums to reopen, but part of the stipulation with that was that if you have any interactive, hands-on exhibits, that those were to remain closed. Well, I feel like our store is a, pretty much a hands-on, uh, you know, exhibit. So, uh, 
that's a challenge we do face, you know, once we do open the doors. And uh, I think it's too early right now for us to really, you know, feel safe doing that. And uh, for both our employees and the customers. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Um, yeah, no doubt. It's kind of like a, a candy store. Um, yeah, I got to say, uh, yeah, one thing I wanted to ask you also is, you know, I've been to Austin three times, you know, it's a, it's a mm -hmm. great city. I mean, the live music is just, you know, tremendous. So what's the scene like there? I mean, first of all, and I would assume a lot of the, you know, live musicians are your customers. So, I mean, how, how are they getting by? I mean, I mean, what are you seeing? Are they playing at home a lot? Or, I mean, I mean, how is it happening? They can't get gigs. I mean, and, you know, and your, your city goes quiet. I mean, what, it's gotta be eerie. You know, I, I gotta imagine, you know? Yeah, it's, it's, it's odd for sure. Um, you know, the, we have a huge traffic pro uh, problem here and it's been, you know, we I ride a motorcycle, so it's actually been kind of nice because I've been zipping around no traffic. It's been great, but it is kind of eerie and weird. And, uh, the uh you know uh there are different we do have different programs in place uh within the city uh that uh like there's the uh ham which is the uh health alliance for austin musicians um that's a really good organization that i think's been on the ground floor helping uh helping local musicians and people out you know displaced without gigs now and that income and that sort of thing uh, there's a uh, but I think Austin also has a really just strong sense of community. And I think that's something that really, you know, everybody I see on social media, there's all, all, side, all, all types of benefits and, you know, uh, programs going on to help, you know, the people that work at the venues, the musicians uh, and everywhere in between. Um, and hopefully, you know, hopefully once, once we uh, get past this, you know, I, I'm hoping that, a lot of these venues and places will reopen. You know, that's a, that is a concern, you know, uh, both music retail venues, uh, it's kind of a, a question mark, you know, we don't really know what's, how that's gonna uh, unfold, but I, I am, the positive thing I'm seeing is uh, people are still wanting to play music. People are, you know, taking this time to learn instruments, they're taking new instruments, um, we're selling a bunch of recording gear. I'm hoping that there's some, some uh, uh, you know, a kind of an explosion of some, you know, artists releasing new material and, you know, uh, using this time to to do that sort of thing. Great, great. Okay, thanks for the help. I, I guess lastly, I just ask, um, since you said that, since people are do want to play music, um, which is what I've heard from other people who've interviewed as well. So, um, so is it fair to say you're, you know, at least cautiously optimistic when things do improve. I don't know how long it's gonna be. I mean, there's a lot of different researchers out there. Some people are saying it could get, you know, we could have a vaccine later this year. Then other people say it's gonna be two years before things get better. I mean, I, I don't think anyone knows, um, but with the assumption that at some point things will improve, uh, you know, are you pretty, are, are you pretty confident there, straight music? You, you think that, uh, you know, that business is going to get better, that it could even do a lot better, perhaps. You know, I mean, yeah, I, I do. I, I really think that, you know, this, just like with anything, you know, it's just like when the internet hit our, our business, you know, that was a, a major, major thing. And it changed the way we operated. It changed the way we, we, we conducted business. And I think it's, this is just another example of that. You know, it's, it's a bigger extreme, but, uh, you know, I think that it, it, like with these new apps that are in place, the curbside pickup, these are all things that, you know, people are going to expect moving forward in the future regardless. So I think it's something that, you know, as any music retailer, you, you got to adapt and roll with, you know, roll with the punches. And uh, I think we, we've always done a really good job of that. And I'm confident that, you know, uh, we have a good plan in place uh, for reopening and, and that once, once business does get back to, uh, to normal, I think, uh, you know, people are going to still want, they're going to need those local shops. They're going to need those places to uh, go take their guitar to get fixed. Uh, their, you know, their horn to get repaired, whatever. Um, and I think that's important that uh, we continue to work towards that uh, in whatever fashion that, that is, you know, and, uh, but I do feel like, you know, music is something that's very vital and uh, important to people. Uh, and I think uh, that's never going to change. So, um, yeah, I think it's just a matter of time. It's kind of a, a, a wait and see. It, it changes daily, you know, but I think ultimately you just have to be able to adapt 
And uh, I think that's something we've always done a good job of. Great, great. Oh, I should say before I let you go, just one quick follow-up based on what you're saying. Um, based on this, you're, are you are you going to have some permanent changes in the store as far as your sales approach goes? I mean, I mean, are you doing a lot of online e-commerce, or will that? And if not, is that going to change a lot based on what happened? I think yeah. I mean, we we uh, before this we were already doing uh, a lot of online and e-commerce, and I think it's you know. If anything, we've learned from this uh, that, that we can uh, streamline our, our online uh, system a little better internally uh, to expedite orders and that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, that was just kind of a learning curve because you know we, we've done a lot of online business, but then when you go to only online business and that's the only uh, avenue, it, it uh, created a little bit of a log jam there at first. But we kind of worked through some of that and um, I think, yeah, definitely moving forward in the future online. I think that's, a, you have to be, you have to have an online presence or, or, you know, it's, it's a game over. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well thank you, Chris, so much. And uh, for more on uh, straight music, uh, check out the June issue of the music and sound retailer. We're going to shine a light on you guys feature. So uh, thank you for that. And uh I appreciate all your help today and Absolutely. you know stay safe. I mean that's that's the key thing, you know, for everybody first and foremost. Yeah. Yeah. Or anything else. Um, but then after that, I hope your obviously your business uh comes back and thrives if it isn't already. So uh, you know, best of luck there and uh yeah, thanks for thanks for the help. I I appreciate the interview. Absolutely, thank you. Okay.